In California, Sasha is trying to find work as a fashion designer. After graduating from college a year ago and having been to dozens of interviews, she still hasn't gotten any luck because of her lack of experience. Sasha never really needed to work since she's living off the trust fund set by her dad, of which she's already spent half on various luxuries. Her divorced mother may supports this lifestyle, but wishes Sasha would pick up her father's calls. Sasha refuses though, because her father always forgets her birthday and other important occasions, he only calls when he wants to convince her to move back to China to work in his toy factory. One night, after partying with her friends at the club, Sasha discovers she can't cover the bill because her card has been declined. Her friends don't mind paying for her since she's always been so nice to them, but Sasha still rushes out of the building to call her father Teddy, who confesses this wasn't an accounting mistake, he blocked the card on purpose. He's also blocked her access to the trust fund because he's effectively cutting her off unless she comes back to China to work in the family business. If she does good work for a year, then he'll give her the money back. However Sasha turns him down again, claiming she'll find a job and pay for things herself. Later at her home, Sasha's friends wonder why she's against going to China, since working for a year to gain access to a huge trust fund doesn't sound so bad. Sasha confesses she has a bad relationship with her dad because when she was little, she discovered he had a whole other family before her and May, and one day her half-sister showed up asking for an explanation. To avoid trouble, Teddy sent Sasha and May to live in California and basically just left them here. She used to see him only once a year, and afterward not even that because he knocked up a girl in his factory. Sasha begins looking for any kind of job even if it isn't related to fashion, but she won't be hired even for the lowest of positions. Things get more complicated when she can't pay rent anymore, and to make matters worse, Teddy cuts off May's alimony too. Having no other choice, Sasha flies to China to take her father's deal in his factory in the very small town of Shenzhen. When she arrives, an employee picks her up because as usual, Teddy puts work over his family. It's shocking to see what a fancy house Teddy has nowadays, and after the maid takes her to her new room, Sasha tries to take some selfies to show her friends, but her social networks are blocked in this country by the government. Sasha rests until it's time for dinner when she gets to see her half-sister Carol again, who came specifically to say hi because she lives in a small place that she pays with her own salary. Teddy introduces her to two more half-siblings, Christian and Dior, who usually live with their mother and stepfather but came today to see Sasha. During dinner, Teddy makes Sasha sit next to him, a place that usually belongs to Carol, and he explains he renovated the house five years ago because he's always dreamed of having all his children under the same roof. There are also two more people at the table, Lulu and her brother. Teddy explains Lulu takes care of him and that her bringing her brother to live with them was part of the work deal, but it's obvious that he doesn't want to admit Lulu is his lover. Sasha gets angry over the fact Teddy will provide for his lover's brother and not his own daughter, so she stomps out of the room. Carol goes to talk to her, explaining that in the early days, she used to have many fights with Teddy too, especially because he told her she couldn't be his daughter if she didn't work for him. He's mellowed out since then, though Sasha can't see how. Carol also confirms Lulu is Teddy's lover, but she isn't wife number four. Teddy has learned his lesson, and it's easier to keep them around as helper girlfriends than to pay alimony to ex-wives. The next morning during breakfast, Sasha has to watch how Teddy yells at the maid just because she ran out of eggs, and then Lulu puts the shoes on his feet as if he was an invalid. On the ride to the factory, Teddy only talks about business, and as soon as they arrive, he's already yelling at employees over small mistakes. Carol has prepared a nice desk for Sasha next to hers at the office, but Teddy doesn't want her to start there, first Sasha will experience the assembly line. After a long day of putting plush animals together, Teddy pays her the equivalent of 15 bucks, which is what the other assembly employees earn. Since she's living with Teddy and eating his food, Sasha gives the money to another employee that needs it more. Then, Teddy takes Sasha to have dinner at a local humble restaurant, leaving Carol behind to finish preparations for a meeting. Teddy wants her to experience how little he could eat when he was young because she was lucky to have a dad to pay for her studies, but Sasha thinks paying for your children's education is the bare minimum, and Teddy should put this much energy and dedication in spending time with his family. During the weekend, Sasha is bored of TV, and she still can't access social media. Teddy is away playing golf, so Sasha accepts to spend time with Lulu, who takes her to a salon that gives them wonderful massages and teaches her how to use the local social media. Lulu confesses she hates doing nothing, but Teddy doesn't let her have a job because he should be her only one. It would be difficult for her to get one anyway because Lulu never finished school, so taking care of Teddy is a good option because she can bring over her brother, who was born illegally under the only one kid per family rule. Once Teddy finishes his studies, Lulu hopes she can work in the salon again, and Sasha begins seeing her with more respect. Sometime later, Sasha begins attending the sale meetings with Carol and Teddy. A client that usually makes big orders only makes a small one this year, claiming that Teddy's toys aren't as wonderful as they used to be. Once the client is gone, Teddy calls the designers to yell and throw toys at them for humiliating him before ordering them to work overtime to create a new Christmas collection. Afterward, Sasha goes to see the designers at their office to see what they're doing, and she notices they're still doing the same old traditional designs that were called boring mere minutes ago. 
she throws some ideas at them, yet they don't understand her, and when she tries to use Google to help them see the concept behind design terms, she finds it blocked. Sasha realizes then that the company has boring designs because the designers don't have access to the outside world to learn about trends, so for now, she draws her ideas herself for them to use as guides. Then, Sasha goes to see Teddy to ask permission to take the designers to Hong Kong for market research, and Teddy accepts. Carol gets frustrated because she offered the same idea years ago and was turned down, but now Teddy is finally trying new things simply because he lost sales. Sasha takes the designers to Hong Kong and they have a wonderful day together learning about the incoming trends. During lunch, the designers are shocked to taste the wonderful hamburgers, because what they eat at the factory is as bad as prison meals. Sasha can't understand how they've been working so many years with Teddy in these horrible conditions, and the guys explain they're happy to just have a job because they couldn't do this in the Philippines, which is the place they come from. Teddy paid for one of the guy's treatments for his sick mother, and hired the second designer even when he just needed one to give him a chance. Unfortunately, their kids are still back in the Philippines with their grandmothers because daycare in China is very expensive. Most people in the factory see their children only during New Year. The next day at the factory, Sasha spends more time with the designers to help them with the new ideas. When lunch break comes, she turns down going with Carol and Teddy to a restaurant and eats in the canteen like everyone else, confirming the food is awful. Sasha learns that there used to be fruit too and it got cut off, also that Carol never socializes with the workers. At the end of the day, Sasha convinces Teddy to add the fruit to the menu because it would help the morale, and the workers adore Sasha for it. The following day, Sasha and the boys present the new designs to Teddy. They're far from traditional and Carol is skeptical, but Teddy gives in when he remembers the last client wanted new ideas. During lunch, Carol expresses her worries over the incoming production, and Teddy explains he needs to take the risk because success is only proven if he can pass a thriving business to his children. Carol thinks that this philosophy just puts a lot of pressure on his children, but Teddy dismisses her thoughts. The next client to visit the factory is Margaret from the very important gift chain Dahlia's, who at first ignores Sasha's designs for not being traditional. However Sasha cuts in and offers an excellent marketing speech that makes Margaret change her mind and make a huge order of the new designs. After the meeting, Teddy congratulates Sasha on her initiative and lets her take care of Dahlia's account, which bothers Carol because she had been taking care of that one for years. In the evening, Carol and Sasha go to Hong Kong to celebrate. Over drink Sasha learns that Teddy had had many girlfriends while still married and had to pay for many abortions. Carol also confirms Teddy was still married to her mom when he met May, so both girls had been in the dark about the other family and were dumped in the USA when everything blew up. They lament not having been closer to Sasha when they were younger, but they're glad to reconnect now. Sometime later, Teddy gives Sasha a check with the rest of her trust fund. Sasha doesn't feel she's earned it, but Teddy assures her she's grown a lot since she's arrived. The next day Sasha gets a sample from Dahlia's order and decides to change the toy scarf for something with sequins. The worker warns her changes shouldn't be made this close to production and that this fabric was forbidden by Teddy, but Sasha assures her she can trust her orders. The following day, Dior and Christian come to stay with Teddy and Sasha for a few days because their mother is going to the USA to have her new baby. There is a parent-teacher conference at school soon and Dior wants Teddy to go, but Teddy doesn't even know what that is. He wants to send Sasha in his place, but then Dior begins crying because his dad never goes to any school activities, so Teddy gives up and accepts to go. Sometime later, they find out that Sasha's collection failed testing because the sequins are a potential choking hazard. Teddy is furious, and Carol yells at an employee for not letting her know about Sasha's changes since they knew about the fabric. However Sasha defends the workers, since it was her mistake, not theirs, angering Carol too by comparing her attitude to Teddy's. To solve the issue and avoid extra work, they end up sending a toy with the original scarf for the test, which is only a formality and the actual toys they sell have the new scarf anyway. A few days later, Dior shows up at the factory and makes a scene during a sales meeting, furious because Teddy sent Carol instead of going to the conference himself. Instead of talking to her, Teddy sends Carol and Sasha to take care of her while he stays with a client. The girls take Dior to another office and try to teach her that just because Teddy yells around the factory she shouldn't be doing the same. Dior doesn't care because she hates Teddy for having paid the judge to win custody yet he sent the kids back to their mom after a month of living with them. Sasha and Carol share their own awful experiences and teach Dior not to let the divorce define who she is. Suddenly, Teddy shows up in the office while arguing with Dior's mom on the phone, telling her she raised a monster. Sasha and Carol come in Dior's defense, pointing out she feels neglected and that Teddy already ruined two families so he shouldn't repeat the same mistakes. Then, the girls leave to let Teddy make up with Dior. Sometime later, the factory receives bad news from Dahlia's, a kid choked on the sequins and the entire stock had to be recalled, including the toys with no scarves. Now the factory is on Dahlia's blacklist and won't ever do business with them again. Furious, Teddy begins yelling at Sasha for ruining his business, ignoring Carol's attempts at defending a poor newbie's mistake. Teddy thinks Sasha did it on purpose to close the factory because she never wanted to work here and she thinks he treats the workers badly. Just for this, 
Teddy is canceling the bonuses and nobody is going home for the holidays, this way they can cover the lost cost. Teddy also calls Sasha useless and a disappointment, wishing she had never come in the first place. Hurt, Sasha goes back to the house to pack her things. Carol comes to see her, asking her not to react harshly because Teddy didn't mean it, he just likes to yell when he's angry. Sasha can't understand how Carol can defend him, so Carol explains this was supposed to be her last year and she only stayed more time because Teddy wanted her to train Sasha. If Sasha leaves, Carol won't be able to go. Sasha calls Carol out for not seeing how Teddy has been manipulating her, she's a grown woman and nothing is stopping her from leaving whenever she wants. Offended by the truth, Carol says she's been doing what's necessary for the sake of the family and accidentally confesses she had been the one to give Teddy the idea of cutting Sasha off to make her come because she wanted Sasha to suffer what she's been suffering the last 10 years. Teddy had threatened to disown Carol if she didn't take over the factory as the eldest daughter, and Carol is convinced he always liked Sasha more. However Sasha tells her to get over it, because Teddy had treated them both badly, and now she's even more hurt because her favorite part of this job was reconnecting with Carol, yet it turned out to be just a petty revenge plot. After saying goodbye to Dior and Christian, Sasha returns to the USA in tears. For now she'll be staying with her mother, and for a few days, she does nothing. Depression hits her hard, especially because she feels guilty about the workers having lost their vacation. She had started to like it in China, and she doesn't know where to take her life next. When she's finally strong enough to leave the house, she finds the toys she designed in a store and buys a couple before they're thrown away because of the choking hazard. Teddy tries to call her but Sasha won't pick up, she also doesn't reply to her friend's messages because she isn't in the mood to go out. Meanwhile in China, Teddy won't talk about anything other than how to find a way to replace Dahlia's as clients. Carol finally snaps and tells him she wants to have a normal conversation with her father. When Teddy tries to reflect saying his job is just his responsibility towards the family, Carol calls him out, pointing out that being a responsible dad would include not cheating or abandoning his family in the first place. Carol points out all the ways Teddy hurt her, including the fact he treats her like an employee and not a daughter, and finally quits. A few days later, Sasha's friends get tired of not getting an answer from her and show up at her home. Sasha confesses she had been embarrassed to show her face, but her friends tell her she should be proud of her work because it's great. If the only issue it's the scarf, then they could simply cut it off. The girls then get an idea, they know of a very important toy influencer on YouTube that could review the toy, and with all the followers asking for these designs, they could make Dahlia's change their mind. A week later, Margaret calls Sasha to her office to have a meeting. The YouTube plan had been a success, and now all the stores are asking for huge restocks. To avoid PR drama, Margaret accepts to sell the toys again, but the factory will have to cover the hours of cutting off the scarves. Sasha accepts the deal and before she leaves, Margaret offers her a job in the company because she thinks Sasha is very talented and now has the experience. While Teddy begins feeling lonely in China, Sasha begins working for Dahlia's. One afternoon, she gets a visit from Carol, who apologizes for everything that happened and explains she's finally in charge of her own life. Sasha apologizes too and the sisters become friends again. Sometime later, Sasha travels back to China on a pre-sourcing trip for Dahlia's and uses the chance to visit the factory. Sasha and Teddy apologize to each other, and after Teddy congratulates her on her new job, he confesses he found a way to pay the bonuses anyway. Morale is still low, so Sasha donates the money from her trust fund to provide on-site childcare in the factory. Teddy doesn't want to accept because this is working time, not personal time, but Sasha changes his mind when she points out Teddy already sacrificed his own family and the workers shouldn't go through the same. After announcing the big news, Teddy and Sasha go out for lunch. Teddy tells her she's proud of her because the reason he made her come had been to gain experience, not for his own business, and that's more valuable than a trust fund. He would love it if his daughters took over the factory but if they don't want to, he'll learn to live with it. As a compromise, Sasha offers to work as a freelancer, occasionally sending her father new designs, and Teddy accepts. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.